how did I build this AI-powered SaaS in less than 15 minutes without writing a single line of code? In this video, I'll show you exactly how I did it, step by step. So by the end, you'll have a fully functional web app that's live and ready to use. But here's the problem. Most no-code tools only let you design the app. They don't set up the backend or user accounts, so you're literally left with something that looks good but doesn't actually work. So here's exactly how we'll build the app. In step one, we'll let AI generate the app idea and create a plan. Step two is to build the core features so it actually works. And then in step three, we launch it live so it's fully functional and ready to use. And don't worry, you don't need to be a coding expert. I've made this tutorial super simple to follow, even if you've never built an app before. By the end, you'll see just how easy it is to turn an idea into a real working app using AI. If you've ever tried using AI to build something, you probably know that it doesn't just magically read your mind. The more context you give it, the better it performs. That's why, before we even start building, we need to give the AI a clear blueprint of exactly what we want to create. So, for step one, let's head over to buildwithai.io and use my free AI tool to generate our project context. Go to the Brain Dumper page. You get five free generations per month, so make them count. Now, select Lovable. And what's so great about Lovable is it builds the entire MVP for you with the perfect setup, UI, backend, database, and AI features. We just need to give it a good context, so let's continue. I've already written down my app idea, so I'll just paste it in. But before we move forward, pause the video and brain dump everything you want in your app. And I mean everything. Features, must-haves, even the smallest ideas that pop into your head. And don't worry about writing it perfectly, just get all your ideas out. Because the more details you give, the better the AI will perform. Once you're ready, hit generate, and just let the magic happen. I'll just skip the generation until it's done. And now that it's generated, there are three simple steps to follow. First, copy the context. Second, open Lovable. Third, open Mobbin, which we'll use for the UI later. Now go back to Lovable, and let's move on to step two, building the core features of the app. So paste in the context from Brain Dumper. Here we can see the full context, all the features that we want to include, and the game plan, which lists what is prioritized to build. And you should skim through this just to make sure it includes everything you want to build. So once you're ready, hit enter and Lovable will start processing the context we just provided. And now, Lovable starts writing your code live. You can see it's actually generating components, adding global styles, and setting up the foundation for your app. And here is the result from the first prompt. He's made the can Kanban board with four columns. Before we keep building, we need to connect Supabase. If we skip this step, our app won't store data, manage users, or even function. Supabase is the backbone of the entire app, so let's set it up properly before moving forward. Click the Supabase button in the top right corner. If you don't have an account, create one. It's free. Now, create a new project. I'll call mine DeepWork V2. Add a strong password, then hit Create New Project. Now, we just need to wait for Supabase to finish setting it up. And once it's ready, go back to Lovable and click the Supabase button again. You'll see your project, so click Connect. And just like that, Supabase is fully linked to our project. Now Lovable detects that Supabase is set up and that authentication is ready, so let's set up the user authentication. And literally, all I need to do is type in the chat, set up auth, and AI takes care of the rest. Let's pause for a moment. What you're looking at here is SQL, the programming language for relational databases. Knowing how relational databases works makes everything way easier if you want to understand how your app stores and manages data. So let me break it down in the simplest way possible especially for beginners like Tim here. Hey Tim, do you want to quickly understand what relational databases are? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so think of it like Excel spreadsheets. You have columns as the title and rows for each piece of data. So if we're to add a new row with the data filled in, this will act like the database of how we are saving the information. Got it. And the word relational means that instead of having one huge spreadsheet with like 100 columns, we split it into smaller ones and connect them with IDs. Like how exactly? Each table has a unique ID. ID, which is called a primary key. So in order to keep all these tables organized, we just simply link them together. Let's say we want to store movies. Then we can split this table up into smaller, more specific tables, like movie details, movie actors, and movie reviews. Okay, that makes sense. So it just keeps the database organized and easy to manage? Exactly. 
All right, now where were we? Yeah, right. So the AI then creates a profiles table with four columns, ID, username, avatar, URL, and created at. The created at column is a standard feature in all tables, which automatically adds the timestamp when each new row is added. Now click apply changes, and this generates everything. The login and sign up forms, the security features, and a full authentication system. Now what happens when we log out and try signing back in? Will it actually work? Let's test it out. I'll create an account and hit sign up. Now we'll get an email automatically sent out to verify our account. So open the email and confirm the account. Now close out of this and head back to Lovable. If we now log into the account we just made, boom, we can sign out and sign in again to make sure it works, and yeah, this works perfectly, first try. If we now head over to the database and navigate to authentication, we can see the account I just made with the ID, the email, when the account was created, and the last time I signed into the account. And if we now head over to table editor, we can see all the tables, but currently we only have the profiles table set up. So if we take a look at the ID and head back to authentication, it's the same ID. When you click on a user, you'll see a detailed overview on the side with lots of information about that specific user. And here we can even delete the account, reset their password and stuff like that. So if we close out of this, we can also see the button to add new users manually from the database. And here you can either send an invitation directly to someone's email or manually create a new user, just like signing up through the front end. Now, let's jump back into Lovable and pick up where we left off. We need to grab our list of planned features, so let's scroll all the way up in the chat. Copy those features and keep them somewhere easy to access. Since we've already built the first feature, let's go ahead and remove it from the list, and let's ask Lovable to continue building the Kanban board. It's now thinking through what's next to build next, and we'll continue building. And just like that, the AI has built the drag and drop functionality and as we can see here, implemented the rule for only allowing one task to be doing at a time. Perfect. That's another feature done, and look at how fast we're moving. Now, let's continue by removing the feature we just built from the list and move on to task management. I'll skip until the AI is done building, and wow, it added a lot here. Now we can add tasks, edit them, delete, set priority, and set a deadline. Wait, something's wrong. The edit and delete buttons aren't clickable. That means, if we launch this app right now, people won't even be able to update their tasks. Let's see why this is happening, and more importantly, how to fix it. So let's Let's just mention these issues and have the AI fix them real quick. All right, now we can see that adding tasks works, but what happens when we log out of the account? If we sign in again, we can see the tasks are not being saved. So let's ask the AI to fix it. What the AI will do now is create the database table for tasks. So go ahead and hit apply changes. Now that Lovable has fixed the database, it just needs to update the user interface. This looks promising. All the columns are empty for now since we haven't created any tasks yet. Now, Lovable wants us to refactor the code, but what does that even mean? While Lovable handles this for us, let me break it down. Hey Tim, when coding with React, we split our code into smaller files. Think of it like using lots of small Lego blocks instead of one big block. Why do we do that? Because it makes your app faster and easier to work with. When you need to change something, you only update a small piece instead of digging through a huge file. And each small file is called a component, which means you can reuse it in different parts of your app. For example, imagine a navigation bar. Instead of writing the same code repeatedly on every page, you create a separate component and just drop it in wherever you need it. That's cool, but how do I know when to split my code? You should split your code when a file gets too long to read easily, or when a single component is handling too many things at once. The goal is to keep each part simple and focused on one job. This way, your code stays organized, easy to understand, and much easier to maintain. That makes sense. Thanks for explaining. But luckily for us, the AI does this for us, keeping the code structured and organized without us having to even worry about it. And now that the database is connected, let's see if it can remember the tasks we're adding. I'll create a task and sign out of the web app. Now, when I sign back in, the task is still there. That means it's working. Just to be sure, I'll try one more time. I'll add another task, sign out, and sign back in. Yep, this is working perfectly. Now, if we head over to the database under table editor and open the tasks table, we can see all the tasks we've created along with their titles, descriptions, priorities, and everything else. So 
let's head back to Lovable and update our progress. From the features we saved earlier, remove the one we just built and move on to the next one. Again, just copy and paste it directly into Lovable. And if you want to see what's happening under the hood, you can just click on the box. And here, we can watch the AI write the code live. Then, it moves on to editing the Kanban board file to integrate the new timer. And this is the fastest way to learn. That's exactly how I started coding. Just one year ago, I landed my first job as a full-stack developer without knowing anything about coding. But now that Lovable is done, let's see what happens when we drag a task over to the doing column. Amazing. Look at this. A timer starts automatically as soon as we move the task. This is exactly what I wanted. It's honestly crazy that we can build all of this just by describing what we want in plain text. But the AI didn't fully understand what I wanted. The functionality works nicely, but it's not exactly how I wanted it. So let's fine tune it and build it just how I want it. I'll ask the AI to display the timer over the entire website and add the ability to pause or finish a task. And you should never be able to have a task in the doing column unless you're actively working on it. And I'll also ask it to save the total time spent on each task. All right, this looks interesting. Let's see how it works now. If I press pause, it automatically moves the task back to to-do. And if I drag it back to doing, the timer starts in full screen mode to help me focus on just that specific task. So when I now click complete, it will move the task to the done column. Perfect. Now the only issue is that it didn't actually add the feature to remember the time spent on a task. So let's quickly ask the AI to fix that. We need to add a new column called elapsed seconds to the tasks table in the database. Once that's done, just click apply changes. All right, let's test this out now. Yes, now it actually remembers and saves the time spent on each task. Let's keep going. This is moving fast. Next up is the AI implementation, but I want to finish the web app first, so we'll save that for later. For now, let's copy the next feature and paste it into Lovable again. At this point, you should start to see the pattern. We ask the AI to build the features, test if if it works and refine anything that needs fixing. Now that it's done, we can see the filters it added at the top of the page. We can sort tasks by priority, low, medium, high. We can filter tasks by column, inbox, to do, doing, done. We can filter tasks by deadline and see only those due before a certain date. And we can clear all filters with one click. Great. Now, let's move on to the last feature before we start implementing the AI. Copy the feature, paste it into Lovable, and hit enter. Now, it has added an analytics page, but there's an error. No problem. We can fix this instantly by either pressing F on the keyboard or just clicking the button. And just like that, the error is fixed. Let's try checking out the analytics page again. This looks much better. Now I can see that I've completed 50% of my tasks and spent less than a minute in total working on them. So let me just speed up the time while sitting in a task for a few more minutes. All right, that should be good enough. Now let's navigate back to the analytics page and see what's changed. I've completed 100% of my tasks and spent two minutes in total, which means I averaged one minute per task. And now it's time for the final feature, the AI chat box implementation. For the last time, copy the feature, paste it into Lovable, and hit enter. Lovable is telling us that DeepSeek is not available at the moment because they were recently cyber attacked, so I'll use OpenAI's API for now. And I can confirm this on the DeepSeek platform. We're unable to top up the balance since they've disabled the feature. But whilst editing this video, DeepSeek is actually back up and running, so just use DeepSeek yourself. Let's navigate to platform.openai.com and create an account. Now let's check out the pricing section. The cheapest model available is GPT-40 Mini. So to create the API key, go to the overview page and click Start Building. Create your organization and continue. When prompted, just click, I'll invite my team later. Now, name your API key. I'll call mine Deepwork V2 and I'll name the project the same. Once the key is generated, copy it, head back to Lovable and click Add API Key. Just paste it in and submit it. And let's wait for Lovable to work its magic. If we check out the analytics page, we can see that it added AI task insights. Let's see what this actually does. Okay, so it looks like it's just using AI to generate an overview of all tasks, but that's not what we want. I'll ask Lovable to turn the AI into a chat box in the corner where I can ask about anything related to all the tasks in the database. I'll also include an example question so it understands what I 
want to make. All right, now we can see the AI chat box in the bottom right corner. But does it actually work now? Let's test it. How many tasks have I completed today? Hmm, this answer is way too complex, and it looks like it's just using placeholder text. Let's ask Lovable again to make the responses more concise and double check if the AI is actually working. If we refresh the page and ask the same question again, nice, that's exactly the response I wanted. Perfect. Now we're officially done building the web app, but the UI could definitely use some improvements. Remember Mobbin, the website we opened earlier? Navigate back to that tab. This site is a goldmine for UI design since it's a library of screenshots from successful companies' websites and apps. And here's the cheat code. You can literally copy and paste these screenshots directly into Lovable and it will recreate the UI design perfectly. Go to Screens and Web. Here you'll see dashboards from companies like Amplitude and Stripe, ready to be copied. But since we're building a Kanban board, let's open the search bar and look for Kanban. Scroll through the designs until we find one that looks good. I must say, I really like Incident.io's design. It's clean, modern, and just looks professional. So, just click the Copy button, head back to Lovable and paste the screenshot into the chat. Then ask Lovable to use this design for inspiration, but only apply it to the pages we already have, to make sure the AI does not add any extra pages. Once it's done, let's open the web app in the browser and see how it looks. Sign in, and, nice, this design looks very good, I like it. The analytics page also looks great, and I really like how the filters are now in the sidebar, and the AI chat box looks perfect as well. This is exactly what I was looking for. Now that everything looks good, let's move on to step three. Time to launch it. First, close out of the web page and head back to Lovable. Click the GitHub button in the top right corner and connect to GitHub. If you don't have a GitHub account yet, go ahead and create one. Now, hit Install and Authorize. Next, click Transfer Repository. Select your GitHub account and push the project over to GitHub. Now, head over to GitHub.com and you'll see the repository we just pushed. Open it up and I'll just rename it real quick. Now, go to Versal.com, log in, click Add New, and choose Project. Simply import the GitHub repository and click deploy. And just like that, your project is live. If we go to the dashboard, we can see the status is ready. And if we click the Versal link to our project, we can log into the old account and see that everything is working perfectly. But let's take it one step further and add a custom domain, which is extremely easy. Go back to the Versal dashboard and click on domains. Now, click add, type in the domain you want to use. I'll just use a random one I bought earlier. Click add domain and then add. Next, you'll see some DNS records that you need to add to your domain provider. This only takes about 30 seconds. So go to wherever you bought your domain and add the new required DNS records. Now just wait until the DNS settings are linked. This might take around 10 minutes. And once everything is ready, search for your domain in the browser. And just like that, you've built and launched a web app. Now that your web app is live, what if you could turn it into a mobile app as well? Click this video to learn how to build a mobile app with AI.